بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبو القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا قضاء نعوذ بك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين we continue our study of the book Lessons on Imam and Wilaya and we were discussing chapter 9 Imam Ali's successorship in the Quran after the verse of propagation of ayat or tabligh we move on to the verse which is known as the verse of Ikmal din verse of perfecting the religion, which is related to actually the verse of Tabligh, as I explained last week. Uh, to understand better this, um, this point, if you look at verse 3 of chapter 5, Surah al maidah verse 3, you see that the beginning and the end of this verse, which is uh, rather long verse, it's about six lines. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those types of food which are prohibited. And like, you know, animal which is not slaughtered properly. And then in the middle, there is a discussion about perfecting uh, religion and completing blessings and then again the discussion about food uh, is going on and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if someone is in a condition in which for saving his life for example he has to eat something which is prohibited then as long as it's kept to the minimum it would be permissible so beginning of the verse and the end of the verse is about food but the, in the middle there is something about religion which is referring to the incident of Ghadir Khum and declaration of the successorship of Imam Ali alayhi salam. We have something similar in Ayat al tathir in Surah Al Ahzab. Chapter 33, verse 33 is about Ahlul Bayt. Ayatul Tatir, Inna ma yuridu Allah liyudhiba ankum al-rijs Ahlul Bayt wa yutahirakum kathira. But the previous verses and the verses that come after that are not related to Ahlul Bayt. So in a context which is about wives and uh, women of Ahlul Bayt, wives of Ahlul Bayt, and the uh, pronoun is Kunna or Tunna, which is for the uh, female plural, then we have Innama Yuridullah Liyotaba and Kum. Kum is for male. Before and after is for female. So this is a similar pattern that we have in the verse 3 of chapter 5 something which is about Ahlul Bayt or Imama is somehow hidden. It's somehow inserted in the middle of a discussion about another subject. This shows that perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to somehow cover and give a protection to these verses because there were people who were not happy with anything about successorship or imam as we know even narrating hadith of the prophet was banned writing down and registering them was banned after the demise of the prophet and there was a risk that if the issue of imam was clearly explicitly mentioned then Quran also would be targeted by those people who targeted hadith and at least would have removed 
some verses of the Quran about Muhammad Sattu Sufi from the Quran. So Allah doesn't make it very explicit. In any case, let us reflect on the phrase about Qadir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-yawm ya'isa al-ladheena kafaru min deenakum fala takhshawhum. Today, those who have rejected and rebelled against the truth, because when we say kafaru, most of the time in the Quran means kufr al-juhud. We have already said this in previous courses. And kufr has different meanings, but Allah Tabatabai says that if there is no evidence, that the general assumption that we have is that kufr means kufr al-juhud, means disbelief of the people who knew the truth and were sure about it, but they denied it. جَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنْفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا So, الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا means those enemies of God, enemies of Islam, enemies of any scripture who wanted to destroy the mission, the message. So, today, they have lost their hope. اليوم يأس الذين كفروا من دين. They have lost their hope. They have become dispersed with respect to your religion. Means today they lost their hope to in either defeating a religion or manipulating your religion. So you have to look for something that can fit into this. Which day was that day in which something important happened that Allah says, up to today, Kufar still had hope. But now they have no hope. This cannot be something simple. This cannot be an ordinary even wajib or haram which was declared. Or an ordinary article of faith or morality. This must be something very fundamental without which Islam is at risk is in danger but after this islam is strong and kuffar have no hope in defeat defeating or manipulating islam al-yawm ya'is al-ladheena kafaru min deenakum fala takhshawhum from today have no fear of those enemies. But Wahshaun fear me. What does it mean? Fear me about your religion, which is my religion? Can Allah send his religion to us and then he himself fights against his religion? What does it mean? It means that from today external enemies cannot harm this faith harm in the sense of defeating it destroying it taking out of its direction they can create troubles they can annoy you but they cannot defeat or destroy religion okay but vakhshaun but you should have fear that I may take away this blessing from you. I have blessed you with this faith, but I may take it away. So Allah is not going to defeat and destroy his faith, his religion, but he may take it away from us. Because we have a Quranic principle that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a blessing, then if we change, if we go to a worse condition, we may lose the honor of having that blessing. We have in the book two verses of the Quran about this fact. One is verse 11 of chapter 13, which is general, about good condition or bad condition. In Allah. 
لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم Truly Allah would not change the affairs of any nation unless they change themselves So if they change themselves then Allah will make also change so some ulama say this means positive change or bad change even if you want to positive change you have to change yourself but the minimum is losing the blessings so no loss would happen your situation would not become worse if you yourself don't do something wrong this idea is very clearly mentioned in verse 53 of chapter 8. If you look at the next ayah. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَكُمْ مُغَيِّرًا نِعْمَةً أَنْعَمْهَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنْفُسِهِمْ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ It's about blessings. That is because God would never change. A blessing that he has bestowed on a people, on a nation, unless they change themselves. They change their affairs, they change their condition. And truly God is hearing and all-knowing. So, when Allah says, فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ بخشون, Don't fear them and fear me, means they cannot destroy Islam from outside. But be worried that you may do something that I take away this ni'mah from you. You will no longer be qualified for having this ni'mah, this gift, this blessing for you. So Islam is guaranteed from outside. But we have to be careful about the inside and internal affairs. Then... اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي. Today I have perfected your religion. What has happened in that day? Because many Sunni scholars and all Shia scholars, they say this was revealed on the day of Ghadir, 18th of the Hajjah, in Hajjatul Wada. Like Ayatul Tabligh that we had before. But there are people who want to relate it to other days and other subjects. But it seems very clear that this must be something towards the end of the life of the Prophet and something which is like putting a seal, putting a kind of guarantee and you know, sanction. If you want to refer to some Sunni sources that they say it was revealed on the 18th of the Hajjah, you can refer to the hadith that we have mentioned here from Bukhari and Umar ibn al-Khattab and Rajulan min al-Yahud qala lahu it has been narrated that a Jewish person asked the second Khalifa Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen Ayatun fi kitabikum taqra'unaha Lo alayna mahshara al-yahudi Nazalat la attakhadna zalika al-yawma eida There is an ayah in the Quran that you read it, you recite it But if it had been revealed to us, Bani Israel, the Jewish people You would have taken that day in which this ayah was revealed as Eid So that every year we would celebrate that day the second Khalif asked, Khalifa asked, Ayyu ayah, which verse do you mean? And that Jewish person said, Al-yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena, which is part of chapter 3 of Surah Ma'idah. Then the second Khalifa said this, Qad arafna dhalika al-yawm, the day that you think should have become like Eid, he says, we have ma'rifah of that day. We know that day. وَالْمَكَانَ الَّذِي نَزَلَتْ فِيهَا عَلَى النَّبِي And also we know the location, the day and the time, the venue, the location that the verse was revealed. عَلَى النَّبِي It was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. 
وهو قائم بعرفة يوم الجمعة. He says that this was when the Prophet was on the day of Arafah, ninth of the Hajjah, in the plain of Arafah. So he relates it to Hajj, but another day. Of course, as I said, there are some Sunni scholars and uh, collections that say it was on the day of Qadir. Some may say other day, some may say actually like uh, different occasions because maybe it was said more than once. But what is important is if we look at the ayah itself and all the evidence which is around, we should look for something very fundamental that must have happened. That before that, Islam was at risk from outside. Before that, Kuffar had hope that they could defeat Islam or manipulate Islam. Now they have lost their hope. And also it must be when Allah says, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم Also it has to be something that as we said, that if it was not declared, إِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّغْتَ رِسَالَتَهِ If you, had not you do not declare this, you would not have uh, declared the Risala. And something that also there is resistance because says, وَاللَّهُ يَعْصِمُكَ مِنَ النَّاسِ So if you put all these together, you realize this cannot be something about a ruling of fiqh, a practical ruling, or an advice in akhlaq. It should be something very fundamental. Now let me explain a little bit what is the meaning of ikmal, perfection. In Arabic, we have two uh, terms which are similar but different, not exactly the same. One is kamal and the other is tamam. Actually, opposite to both of them is naqs. Nuqsan or naqs is opposite to kamal and tamam. So kamal is opposite to naqs. Tam is also opposite to naqs. Because naqs has two meanings. Let me give you an example first. If you are making a house, building a house, what do you need to complete the house? You need to bring all the parts of the house together. You should have doors, windows, walls, ceiling, you know, sink, facilities inside, like washroom, living room, bedroom, this type of things. If you don't have all of this, there is a nax. There's a lack, there's a deficiency. When you make the house complete, it is called tamam. This is completion of the house. But can you now go and live in the house? No. You need to now bring furniture decorate it, make it nice and clean, then you can use it. This is called Kamal. So Tamam is to have all the parts, but Kamal is perfection, not just completion. Means after completion, you have the best form, the best setting for using actually that. You cannot use a house without furniture and decoration. Some kind of decoration, cleaning and painting of everything. So, Allah's blessings can be put in a list. Of course, we can never exhaust. But a great blessing which was not yet there and the list was therefore not completed but became complete after that blessing was given is the blessing that took place on the 18th of Zalhajjah. 
and that is the blessing of Belaya, Imam, successorship to the Prophet. So, this blessing completes the list of the blessings of Allah. But, without this blessing, Islam was already complete. But not com perfect. This is a big question. How Islam was before this blessing complete but not perfect? And the answer is that Imam and Velaya or successorship to the Prophet is not a part of Islam that if you don't acknowledge or believe in you become kafir you are not a Muslim anymore if you don't believe in Tawheed you are not a Muslim if you don't believe in Nabawa you are not a Muslim if you don't believe in resurrection you are not a Muslim if you don't believe in the Quran you are not a Muslim so all these are parts of Islam but if someone doesn't believe in Imam still he can be a Muslim unless he or she deliberately denies that's another issue but if he or she doesn't deliberately deny he just has not come to understand this he's a still Muslim so imama and successorship is not a part as such yes it is a requirement but its relation with Islam is not relation of a part with the compound it's a relation of the soul and a person. Sometimes you have your complete body, but there is no life, there is no soul. Head is there, eyes, ear, there. Hand, leg, all are there. Stomach, lungs, heart, kidneys are there, but there's no life. This is a blessing that comes in another level. Imama is not like kidney for body, or eye, or heart, or brain for body. Islam, Imama for Islam is like soul or life for body. Therefore, when it comes to deen, Allah says, Akmal to lakum deen. But when it comes to Nema, list of the blessings, yes, this is another addition. And without this, the list is not complete. The last point I want to mention, and then shall I finish, is something that you must uh, also take into consideration. In the verse of Tabligh, Ayat of Tabligh, Allah says, Ya ayyuhar rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. Declare what has been revealed to you from your Lord. Wa illam taf alfa ma ballakta rasalat. If you don't declare it, you have not delivered the message. So this is something whose delivery completes the delivery of the message but if you don't deliver you have not delivered the Risala as if nothing has been achieved the Quran also says to the Prophet tell them I don't want any reward from you any return from you La as'alukum alayhi ajra I don't want anything for Risala illa al mawaddata fil qurba. So if there is anything that you want to give in return for Risala is love for my family, for Ahlul Bayt. Again, return and what you want to compensate for should be proportionate. So you see, love for Ahlul Bayt, which is also the path 
towards Allah Manshan Yatakhila Rabbi Sabila is somehow taken as equal or proportionate to Risala. And in Lamtaf Alpha Maballakta Risalata says the same thing. Akmal to also suggest the same thing. So if you want Islam to be complete but also function because there are Muslims who die without having proper guidance and orientation so if you want to have life in Islam in your faith orientation understanding guidance you need to know who would be leading you after the Prophet the Prophet had to declare this and you should know this and you should acknowledge it okay I think this is enough for our discussion today about Imama and inshallah we will continue next week